Billai, and I'm a staff attorney with the ACLU of Northern California. I'd like to address two main issues today. First, um, the concerns, in particular civil liberties concerns, posed by drones, and second, the need for regulation. First, with respect to drones, why do they raise civil liberties concerns? Drones are capable of collecting comprehensive information about who we are, where we go, when we go, and with whom we spend our time. This is detailed information that paints an intimate portrait of our lives and who we are. The right to privacy means the right to control one's personal information. Drones can easily be used for warrantless mass surveillance. This implicates privacy rights, of course, under the Fourth Amendment, um, which guards us against unreasonable searches and seizures, but it also implicates a host of other state and federal constitutional rights. California's Constitution contains an express protection for the right of privacy that was enacted by the voters in Article I, Section 1. It, that Article I, Section 1 was adopted specifically based on concerns about informational privacy and that the government was stockpiling information about us. That was what Article I, Section 1 was meant to guard against. The collection of um, comprehensive information about us also implicates not just Fourth Amendment or in Article I, Section 1 concerns, but also constitutional rights um, under the right of association under the First Amendment and the counterpart in the state constitution, Article I, Section 3. The Constitution gives us a right to associate together, and the Supreme Court um, has recognized that that also means that the government cannot force us to disclose who we associate with because this can have a chilling effect on our associations. So just as Bull Connor cannot compel the NAACP to disclose its membership lists during the civil rights era, the government cannot compel unions to disclose their membership lists. The government now cannot compel us to divulge information about who we associate with. But drones, because they can collect comprehensive information, are capable of doing just that. So given that backdrop of these constitutional rights, we need to tread cautiously. Why do drones raise qualitatively different concerns, however, from other forms of aerial surveillance, helicopters, planes, which are a long-standing feature of, have been a long-standing feature of our lives. There are at least four reasons. First, cost. Uh, drones, the relative inexpensiveness of cost is often advertised by law enforcement as one of its advantages. It is also one of the reasons why drones are qualitatively different. Aerial surveillance is very expensive to acquire, operate, and maintain. When there is a natural deterrent to collecting comprehensive information about us, that resource there, that, uh, that natural barrier resources serves as a deterrent to abuse. But when that limitation is removed, the need for legal safeguards is paramount because law enforcement can then collect comprehensive information based on mere idle curiosity. Second, surreptitiousness. Drones are intended by their very nature to operate in a surreptitious manner. If I am enjoying a sunny afternoon, such as today, in my backyard, although truly I was at the office, um, I might want to sunbathe nude. If a helicopter flies overhead, I know to grab my robe in order to protect my privacy. But if a drone the size of a hummingbird goes hovering over my backyard, I have no idea that images of my naked body are being captured by that drone and used for unknown purposes. So this is the second reason why drones are very different. Third, the technology is rapidly evolving and drones have already and soon will have even greater capacities for capturing staggering amounts of highly personal information. They can be small hovering platforms the size of a hummingbird that can peer into private spaces. They can be equipped with high-powered night vision cameras so-called see-through imaging technology that is under development can track people, monitor them on the inside of uh, buildings. Um, and through distributed video, swarms of drones like insects can be deployed to scoop up information in a way that provides comprehensive surveillance. Video analytics that allows that information to be processed um, and collected to recognize and track specific people, events, and objects. 
The fourth reason why drones are different from traditional forms of aerial surveillance is of, of aerial surveillance is that you have to take into account the comprehensive tapestry of information that is already being collected about us by law enforcement. Um, we live in Northern California, which is home to one of many federal fusion centers to which state and local governments contribute significant amounts of information in the form of so-called suspicious activity reports. Under these guidelines, local law enforcement is encouraged to contribute information when people are engaging in suspicious activities defined very, very broadly to include such things as eliciting information beyond a mere level of curiosity, photographing bridges. If these sound to you like activities that are constitutionally protected and that any self-respecting photographer or journalist would engage in, you're absolutely right. So it's extraordinarily troubling that local law enforcement is already contributing this information if you take into account that uh, drone data will be added on top of the information that is already being collected about us. That is a very detailed picture. Thank you. So then, turning to why the um, the need for regulation. Do we need to be concerned about this issue here? Yes, the Alameda County Sheriff would like to be the first law enforcement agency in California to obtain a drone. Um, there were hearings in February in front of the Public Protection Committee. There was no specific motion, um, so that proposal was not approved, but the uh, sheriff has proposed a budget uh, to the uh, Board of Supervisors just a few weeks ago that had a line item for 20 some million dollars in increased equipment. I have submitted a Public Records Act request to his office to get an enumeration of what that includes. I don't know if a drone is included, but I am awaiting a response and I will certainly share the information once I receive it, assuming I do. Um, so the need for regulation, yes, it's a relevant issue here in Berkeley. We cannot simply rely on the Constitution alone because that standard takes years to resolve itself. Um, what do reasonable expectations of privacy in the context of drones mean? It took years for the issue to sort itself out over GPS tracking. If we just leave it to the courts, there will be years of uncertainty. The need for affirmative le legislation by federal, state, and local legislatures is essential to give us guidance and protection in the interim. Um, there are several key principles that should be articulated. Um, there must be a strict enumeration of the purposes for which drones can be used. Um, it, other, otherwise, there is a significant danger of mission creep. The Alameda Sheriff says he wants it for search and rescue, but his draft policy allows a whole host of other potential purposes. Um, the ACLU takes a strong position that drones should not be used for law enforcement, uh, by law enforcement unless there is a warrant based on probable cause. We urge you to take that into consideration. In addition to limiting the use of drones at the outset, it is essential, absolutely essential, that there be key restrictions on data retention and dissemination. Drone data collected for one purpose should not be used for another purpose. So for example, if you allow drones to be used for fire prevention, they should only be used for fire prevention. Otherwise, there is a danger of pretextual uses. So we urge you to take these privacy considerations, um, into, um, take, take into consideration these privacy issues so that drones are not abused and they are not used for warrantless mass surveillance. Thank you so much. Yeah, you. Use the mic. 